So I first ran into OzTap when I was uh, surfing around on the web on the Mac Observatory website, which is a great resource for those of you who are using the Mac to do astrophotography. But anyways, I downloaded OzTap just because I'm a bit of a software junkie and it is free and opened it up and most people said that it was for like plate solving. But really folks, the software does so much more than that. It has stacking features in it and it has actually some really unique stacking features that I haven't been able to find anywhere else. Some of them I would say allow me to do things that I have wanted to do for so long. And yes, the software is really revolutionizing my astrophotography. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about it today, get you started. We're going to do a one shot killer, uh, taking with the DSLR basically. And I'll show you kind of a difference between, you know, the results that I was getting with a very, very popular piece of software called DSS and the software. Okay, first off, let's open OzTap. It kind of pronounces the Z in, this, in the name, OzTap. So we have two different windows, and doing this with two screens is a little bit nicer than doing this with one screen, because using then these two different windows is kind of nice. I will warn you, if you hit close on either one of these, it'll close the entire app. It won't just close one of the windows. So this right here, of course, is your stacking program FITS viewer. You can view FITS or RAW files through this particular window. And then back here, this is kind of where the magic happens. And first, let's start at the beginning. So this thing is pretty simple. You've got these tabs that go across the top here. And you're going to start at the left, and you're going to work to the right until you're done. If you're just using this to stack your images, then you're probably going to finish at the stack method tab. Okay. There's also alignment processes in here that you may want to take into consideration. Mostly, it's just different types of alignment. And if you increase the number of stars that are used, it's going to increase the amount of time that it takes to stack an image. 200 is plenty, trust me. So, let's go back into the beginning. So, this is where our light frames are to come in. So, let's browse. We're going to go to, let's see here, my EM1 Mark III light frames. And we used... 75 at 1.8 at f1.2 and we're gonna pick these images right here and hit command a actually no command a is not gonna work i've got to drag and select this hit open okay and then the first thing we're going to do is analyze our images and astap will basically open the raw file and it'll actually convert it into a fits file okay and then it will start populating all these different tabs up here with information from which we can then organize the images. Okay, so as this thing is basically analyzing all of your images, and if I was to scroll down, we'd probably come to the beginning of this, but you can kind of see here up at the top, it'll actually give you a percentage of how much analyzation is done. Okay, and then we're analyzing 73 files. And we're doing it on an external hard drive, so it is gonna take a little bit of time. So I'll probably pause the video and come back once this is done. But you're basically going to load in all of your different types of frames, analyze them, load the next set of frames, analyze them, and then come back. Analyzation is done. All of our light frames have been analyzed. And this is kind of similar to registering, which is what's done in DSS. And it takes about the same amount of time. Uh, no surprise there, but basically what it's done is it's gone through and it's analyzed each raw file, turned them into a FIT file, uh, or a lot of software turns them into TIFF files, and it's basically going to analyze them for quality, star level, background. Now you can see my background numbers here, these are really low, 280 is actually extremely good. And the reason for that is because I'm doing these at Cherry Springs. So I've got about as dark a sky as you can get in the eastern United States. And then you've got sharpness. And obviously the higher the number there is better. The exposure time is written out in seconds. So these are 60 second exposures. And then this right here. This is what's really cool. We have the ability to actually sort our images by temperature. It will read from the EXIF metadata in the file what the temperature is. And then down here, see this dark temperature 
checkbox, we can actually load dart frames and actually stack them according to the temperature of that particular light frame and, and basically make them correlate essentially. So essentially we're going to get a dark frame subtraction that's just as accurate as let's say what's done with a dedicated camera if we capture enough dark frames. And so speaking of dark frames let's go ahead and load those. So we're going to go into here my external hard drive and we want darks that are ISO 1600 the same ISO and done the same night. So let's go ahead and load these. And then once again, we're going to hit Analyze. And of course, it's just going to go through the same thing. It's going to register them, essentially. And it'll figure out what the temperature of them is, the width, height, and date, and all that stuff. The analyzation of the darks is now done, which you'll see up here the stack menu returns from a percentage point to the actual name. And then down here, we can turn off image filter classifying and we are going to keep the dark temperature classification set and what that's going to do is that's going to take all of the darks that I took that the camera was at the same temperature and it's going to match it up with those darks that are the same temperature back here in the lights folder all right so now let's so next we would progress on to flats I, I don't have any flats for this anyways so you would just basically browse for them load them like before hit the analyze button and then we're going to skip on to the flat darks Flat darks are actually your bias frames, and let me know too in the comments if that's confusing, because flat darks, usually everybody calls that something else. It, it, they're supposed to be bias frames, but anyways. So let's go to bias, ISO 1600 is what we did these at, and here are my raw files for these. Let's select those, come on. We'll hit open and once again we'll hit analyze and it will go through the process of analyzing them all. This one's actually the fastest of all of them. Basically it's just turning them into FITS files. Okay, so that flat darks or bias analyzation is done. Now, a couple more things about the tabs up here. You can, of course, shrink or increase the size of them, whatever you need to kind of control how much of it you see. And then in the bias frame section, there's really only a couple columns here of information that's important to us. And you can see it does capture, once again, the temperature of the frames that were taken in the camera. You can see it was kind of warmer that day. It was, let's see, what was it? It was 37 degrees when I started out. But let's, we're going to skip over the results tab because that's kind of a tab we actually come back to. And then here, this is actually in the stacking menu. And there's just a couple things. This, this sigma factor, okay? The higher the number you go, the more the less sense, the more sensitive it's going to be to satellites going through your images, let's put it that way. So I typically do 2.2. That, that for me seems to work at getting rid of satellites. If you know that none of your subs consist of any satellites, then you could go for a higher sigma number and that might give you less noise. But we don't need to convert this into one shot color because it already is. And then basically just going to hit the stack button and it's going to do its thing. Okay, so one of the things you'll notice that as it's stacking it, now down here this is basically giving you all the information and it's basically telling you what it is thinking essentially. Now these black squares that you see coming through, that's just going to show up because I'm missing one particular type of calibration frame and those are my flat frames which I didn't load any of those. And so that's all that there means, and really most of this information is pretty much superfluous. You can kind of shrink this down a little bit if you don't want to see it. Alright, so ASTAP has just finished up, and then down here it's basically going to give us a summary of what happened. And at this point we can now go to the results tab, and we can see there's a new data entry here, which is basically a new file that's been created. This is a FITS file. 
And then over in our preview menu, of course, we can actually look at the actual image. And this setting right here, it's currently off. We can turn it on, and basically what it's going to do is kind of do like a bit of an auto stretch to kind of show you, you know, what's in there. And you can do as many iterations of the auto stretch as you want. It's not going to show up too much here because this obviously hasn't been processed yet. Now, and I do want to go back one second though to our lights section. So we could go through these and kind of look for images that don't have as good a quality. Like you can actually see this one here. I had turned this one off last time and, and Aztab actually remembered that even though I had closed these images and reopened them. It remembered that that one wasn't any good and so it kept it unselected like it was last time. But you know, I could select this, actually double click on it, and then over here in this menu, it, it will actually show me that picture. And I think it was because the, the camera got jarred a little bit while it was taking this exposure. So now to save this and to get it out of Aztap and into a form that we can edit, be it Photoshop, I go through a process where I use some of the tools in Serial and then I go into Photoshop and do a bunch of editing. But we're just going to do an export And I like to select TIFF, 32-bit, because that is going to give you the greatest amount of data and that will allow you to stretch the image the absolute farthest. And we can save that to wherever location we want. And then we can go on and do our post-processing. So this first image, this is stacked in DSS or Deep Sky Stacker. And as you can see, there's a lot of noise in it. I couldn't get the colors quite right even after a lot of work and post-processing. And also there was a lot of artifacts in here, like basically groups of pixels that were very distinct that I could find all throughout the image. And when I went and took the exact same data and stacked it in Aztap, as you can see here, not only did it have a lot less noise, but you know, it just worked out better for me and you know, processing it was a lot easier in post. So I'm excited about it, not just because of how easy it seems to be to use, but especially because of that ability for me to kind of stack my images and sync them with thermal darks that are of the same temperature. For people using DSLRs, I think this is really huge. And if you're careful about how you take your thermal darks and basically make a big library of them across a whole huge range of temperatures, you'll be able to really calibrate your images quite well and eliminate a lot more noise. So I hope you enjoy this video. I'm going to have a lot more stuff about Aztep in the future, especially for mono cameras, because there's some really cool features in here for those of you who use filters and mono cameras. Stay tuned.